Oh hey, I didn't see you there. My name is Tim Tognacci, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to build this frame. Cue the intro. Hey guys, real quick before we jump into the build, I just want to let you know that this is my fourth attempt at making a frame. The first three are right here. And uh, they came out okay. One is not so great. I'm gonna end up throwing that into the scrap bin pile to see if I can use this walnut for something else. Um, another one needs some work. And the last one I think came out pretty okay. Um, so I just need to sand this one down, put some finish on it and it should be good to go. But I learned a lot from making these three frames and I'm gonna show you the tips and tricks that I learned along the way. Um, so you don't run into the same mistakes that I did and hopefully you can make one for yourself as well. Let's get to it. All right, so let's talk about the dimensions of the frame for a second, since there are a few important things to keep in mind here. The piece of walnut that I'm using for this project is a little over seven inches wide with some rough edges. So I settled on each side of the frame being an inch and a half wide. This frame is going to hold an eight by 10 picture and I'm planning on cutting a quarter inch rabbit on the inside edge to support the picture and the glass. That means I'll need two pieces cut to 10 and a half inches long and the other two at 12 and a half. I'm cutting the board to 14 inches for now. This will give me some wiggle room for when I cut them down to their final dimensions later on. This joiner jig lets me clean up one of the edges of the board. I'll flip it over and then use that clean edge to reference against my table saw fence to start ripping the boards down to one and a half inches. I ended up using my dado blades on the table saw to cut out the rabbits on the inside edge of the frame. I set them to the minimum thickness, which was a quarter of an inch, and then I raised the blade to a quarter of an inch high. I would have used my router, but I don't have a rabbiting bit that matched the dimensions I was going for. If you're enjoying the video so far, go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Each new subscriber helps me grow the channel and allows more people to see the content I'm creating. Thanks. Now that we have all of the rabbits cut on these pieces, it's time to take them over to the miter saw, cut all the 45 degree angles for them, and then get them down to their actual final dimensions. A few things to note, when you make your first cut, you just need to make one 45 degree cut on each one of them. When you flip it over to the other side, that's when you're gonna to need to put the measurements in. One thing I would recommend is most, um, if not all miter saws have kind of this locking feature in there that uh, will automatically lock in place at 45 when you move it. I wouldn't necessarily trust that. I would grab your speed square, line it up, and make sure that it's perfect 45 uh, before you make the cuts. And then I would also grab a, just a scrap piece of plywood or something and kind of use this as a zero clearance insert. It'll help reduce the tear out when you're cutting the frames. Then it also helps to reference exactly where the saw is going to cut uh, when you need to make your measurement. So. Thank you. 
Here I'm marking out the miters on each piece so I don't accidentally cut them in the wrong direction. After cutting out the 45 degree angle on each piece, I'll flip them over and cut them down to their final dimensions. Uh, 10 and a half inches for two of them and 12 and a half for the other two. I just clamped up the pieces to see the fit, just to make sure everything was right before I glued it up. And uh, when I took my 8x10 sheet of glass, I put it in and it was almost there. So I'm gonna take each piece over to the table saw and just make that groove a little bit wider so we have a perfect fit with the glass. Now it's time for the glue up. I put tape along the seams to help with any glue squeeze out. I'm not sure if this worked, but it didn't not work. Um, after I clamped up the frame and I came back with some sawdust and rubbed it into the glue. This will help fill in any gaps between the pieces. So now that the frame has had about 24 hours to dry, I'm going to cut some splines in each one of these corners just to reinforce the joint. Um, I don't expect that it's completely necessary because based upon the weight in the actual frame, uh, the glue should be pretty strong enough. I think I'm just going to add it in more for decorative touch uh, because I'll be using maple here and it's just going to add to a nice um, uh, color contrast here. So. So I have this piece of maple that I'm going to use for the splines. It's uh, a little thick, so I'm going to take it through the planer a few times just to get it down to that right thickness of about a uh, quarter inch or so. You could also use the table saw. You could take it over to the bandsaw. There's a few different ways, uh, but basically you just want to make sure that the uh, piece of wood that you're using for this is not too tight. Um, you don't want it to be too loose or else it's going to fall out, which happened to another one that I made. Uh, so this way, by taking it through the planer, I can keep checking after each pass to make sure that it's the right thickness for the spline itself. The next day I came back and used my flush trim saw to clean up the splines. Then I sanded the entire piece with 150 grit, uh, sprayed it with water to raise the grain, let it dry, then sanded it up to 220 grit. For the finish, I'm using equal parts of mineral spirits, polyurethane, and boiled linseed oil. I applied a heavy coat, let it sit for 30 minutes, and came back and wiped off the excess.